Uh, no, okay, so I gotta play a song to bring out a... Yeah, so you 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 play the guest intro. We'll, we'll edit this out. <laughs> what? No, we're not editing this out. This is gold. <laughs> we're gonna edit it in. We're gonna loop it like five yeah, times. Yeah, we'll play it five times over just so that you make sure you don't miss it. Yep. Uh, da 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 da. Oh, you gotta do a jaunty little dance to your intro song. It comes. But also don't kick the webcam. Okay. Also, can you turn mic three on? The little push button on the bottom. Time sometimes podcast Dungeons and Dragons. That's about all that I have to talk. Yeah. <laughs> Just out here at a festival, love my life. Yeah, I, I don't recall us giving you permission to plug anything yet, but sure, <laughs> go off. <laughs> I'm the guest. Listen, <laughs> very important here. Your Honor, badgering the guest. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. What? Come on, man. <laughs> Co Co-hosting over here. Does it immediately put me on blast? <laughs> we we have done some role playing in the you know in the past in the past in the past yep. in the bedroom you know mm. <laughs> <laughs> it depends, really happened all over the place <laughs> <laughs> it was messy we we all wear masks <laughs> me, me yeah me and me and me and Tanner love to yeah just 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 play around yeah <laughs> it's very cute like like a gimp mask or like a surgical mask <laughs> I mean it or really de really depends on the day <laughs> I. Mm, I've seen sides of Tanner that uh, no one probably wants to see. But that's probably not true. I'm sure it would make very good footage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I've got all these webcams if you need, like, like we could we could bring all this set up yeah, to, just shoot to your bedroom. Like, we've already uh, got the I already, I, already have, I already have a set up in his bedroom. He just, <laughs> he's just learning about it now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, but does it, you now know, are the mics good? Like, are the... Or are you just using like the webcam mic? Because it doesn't sound good. You're not going to get the big OnlyFans box from that. I did. I didn't make my own sounds for it. <laughs> I would. I would wear a lapel mic on my gimp suit usually. So yeah. 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 That's yeah. That's for Callie and Tara's home videos. That's what they're going to show their child when he's about ten years old, just to scar him real good, real hard, <laughs> <laughs> as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah. Our uh, our fresh eight month old child is also behind this veil. Yes. Listening yeah, to this debauchery. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm just waiting for him to get scarred for life. Does the child want to be on the mic? He's making noise. He sounds like he's, he's making noise. not exactly the happiest being right now. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, at this point, who is? I've seen everyone's faces this morning. Yeah, we had some rough starts. <laughs> it's just a bit, of, a bit of a rough time. Not quite so bad as me trying to get out of the river, but... Oh, yeah. Was, can we talk about the 20 minutes it took you to get out of the river? I'm going to blame that on the flip-flops <laughs> and not the whole... Box of wine that I drank. I was I wasn't there for this, so I, I would love to hear about this. Yeah. So I sat in the river for like a good hour, just cross-legged in the cold ass river, just pounding wine, pounding wine, <laughs> and then I tried to get up with my flip flops on in the running river and literally face planted like four <laughs> separate times. One of them was one of them was like a slow collapse. <laughs> it was very like. Unintentional, it was, like <laughs> trying to catch yourself yep. and ultimately ending up in it the was, water. It was very public. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and, then uh, and then we continued with our lives, but yeah. I continue to uh, yeah not be a very sturdy person for the rest of the day. <laughs> you know, great idea. Episode 70, we should do it from in the river. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you know, given that we're on, currently on, I think it's episode 19, we could probably... I think 70 episodes is enough <laughs> at that point lead time to figure out where to get some like waterproof gear uh, that'd, be, that'd be fun like floating down a river like doing a bow float yeah, you, I guess you could do that I was kind of just making fun of the fact that we'd you know be sitting there with like a PA speaker and a bunch of generator power yeah. the water, I mean but... if you if you brought this picnic table out to the like a shallow little river like that one truth and then make sure everything is sitting above like pick up a little could ambient work. river kind of little people you know, yeah. it's like white noise well we get a board with more shit. than four inputs like you can uh like if i had one of those big like 12 18 input boards like everyone have a mic for them a mic for their dice and <laughs> while we're at it a cam for everyone's dice <laughs> and then uh yeah and then we'd mic up the river as well we should get oh, a cam on every single person so you can see what they're looking at. Yeah. yeah. I mean, after yeah. we're done here, I could take my little, like, Zoom recorder and just take that down to the river yeah. and just, like, add that in post. And it will just... 
We'll retcon it so we've actually been by the river the whole time. It's just behind the edge of your camera. Yeah, we'll just re-record this part and just, you know, say, oh, yeah, we're in the river right now. Don't worry. Episode, <laughs> episode 69. This is not a green screen. <laughs> we are actually in the river. People, got, people do some crazy shit. Have you ever, I shared a video not too long ago. I know you saw the, a guy live streamed uh, an MMA fight being in an MMA fight. Oh, I, I think that was just a gag, right? Oh, like yeah, he, definitely. Yeah. But he's just like, God dunked in the face and yeah. he's like just see all these people on zoom reacting to it they're like holy well there's this trend going <laughs> around <laughs> where there's like people in their zoom meetings and they they have their background like the automatic green screen stitching kind of thing so that it just puts like a, a bedroom behind you where whereas you could be in line at starbucks and it's yeah. actually like really funny because people are doing that in their zoom meetings so people have been taking that idea and extrapolating that into yeah like what if i was fighting a bear with a green screen like <laughs> while i'm in the meeting attached to my, yeah, well, no, it was literally, yeah like an mma fight dude was like yeah. getting the shit kicked out of him while he was in a zoom meeting <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, honestly, we really hit the floor and it's like whoa jesus christ <laughs> really fucked up with these weird ass tapestries because like these could just be green screens i could you yeah. wow man they're literally leaving so much on the table we can, there. we can be in a river whenever we want yeah we could be in the upside down I no, mean, hell yeah <laughs> and speaking of being extremely wet <laughs> always oh yeah we've been calling out our next uh, guest is that was that <laughs> sure we talking about reading uh, i was talking about reading the erotica but <laughs> should our gm come out for the erotica uh oh, well God, yeah i, I mean so. like i feel like gm should definitely be out here yeah, horny with us. Right, we, we shouldn't be horny without him yeah <laughs> we shouldn't be horny without him so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna get the the, the cue going here. Get the music. All right, let's do the drum dance. Game Master Brandon. Actually, just a clone of Marlon Brando, <laughs> genetically and spiritually. I'm gonna unmute this mic too. I think it's the muted. Yes, yes, which is on. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Yes, if there's anybody who knows how to be both wet and horny, it's this guy. Especially right now. I the mean, sun, mm, yeah. it's got me all hot. I can, I can only do one or the other. <laughs> Sometimes you want to get horny, and it's just with the boys, you know? That's, That's why. I, I mean, me and, me and Brad, we, we kissed last night. Yeah, we did. Yeah. yeah good on you, boy. <laughs> I just, just remembered that. Nice that. <laughs> that's, that's like queer praxis, you know? You're just showing. Sometimes you just got to kiss the boys. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Very there was important. two girls there, too. There was. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah. So the, if you're the, not kissing your homies, no, no, how do you know? so it's, yeah. So the, the ratio was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> two, two girls, two boys, no cups, no cups, no cups. <laughs> not this time. I like it. Maybe next time. <laughs> so okay. So as the host, how do you think this should work? We've got a stack of books. We've as got four people. Uh, how do I think it should work? I think we should. Find a lighter and start setting them on fire one by one. Right. I mean, I think that's what they deserve. <laughs> think, well, actually, no. If it was a little cooler out, I'd, I'd be yeah. down to do that. But yeah, we need we need the opposite of fire. We need to put the books on ice. Yeah, yeah we need can to put them on ice. Yeah, can someone just like bring a blizzard, both oh, from Dairy Queen blizzard right now, from, from, from Dairy Queen as well as the weather. Yeah, over anybody to us watching Carver. this, even in just. Yeah, can you somehow go back find a way in to, time and yeah. put me in that cooler? Send it into the past. <laughs> uh, these books could use a cold shower. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need a cold shower out of this. <laughs> I, I, oh, my God. I want to go in our tub so bad, but that's not a good idea. I need to turn it into a pool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Let's see if I can. Hot tubs are bad right now. I'm just going to go break into Cassie's neighbor's house and get in there. Oh. Well, as for getting soaked in these books <laughs> um, so what, all right what's the uh, what's the format do you just so, you, do you put us up to reading them well the format's different every time because okay. the it's, it's an evolving bit it started with um i asked uh you know our previous host god rest her soul to oh no well because she was writing a fantasy book and i was like you know calling her out like yeah well you're gonna you're gonna read three paragraphs from your book on the next show right and so she came and she just read like Ogre erotica? Uh, Ogre erotica. Yeah, I think <laughs> an attempt unique. to make me uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, oh, it has wow. backfired because now we have just done more. Yeah. <laughs> so then we did we did one where we were all uh, in my basement and we made her write some like on the spot ogre erotica. Yeah. And that oh then that transitioned to so she, she had this book so we have read this one. The whole book. Wild for we cowboy. read wild for like cowboy. the main from the main sex scene in it. Okay. Uh, no, we actually read from this one twice. So this one is just this one's just sack of decoration. 
Uh, it's, that one's getting lit on fire. It's good though. Like that, that's the Cal and Gary of erotica books yes. because it's right. like it mentions a calorie stampede by name. Like it's it's, <laughs> oh, it's really? local content. Actually, yeah, is it, that's hilarious. Hilarious. is it written by somebody in Canada? Or? Oh yeah, it's written by somebody like from the Calgary area. That's oh hilarious. Gosh, who we don't want to put on blast. So I mean, like <laughs> I mean, why not? Right on the cover. <laughs> they, isn't it? They decided to publish a book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Surely they want some sort of. But notoriety. this person is kind of like known by the person, so we were kind of doing it. Uh, Oh, yeah, okay, okay. gotcha. Yeah. yeah, I understand. Um, yep. I too so, publish pornography about the stampede. It writes itself, really. Yeah, the stampede <laughs> does. It, the stampede is basically pornography. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, that's why yeah. they call it trampede, right? Yeah, trampede. Mm. Yeah, like maybe of a name, maybe at some <laughs> point we'll get around to writing our own Calgary Stampede porn. Maybe in time for next year. Yeah, I wonder if I wonder if uh, a co-op corporate's going to sue you. Yeah, no, no, no. For pulling them no. out, be like they're oh, actually we're sponsored. They're actually bolstering. The, we had a stimulus package coming in from Cal and Gary's. <laughs> yeah. They're going to pay for the the book deal. So. Yeah, get your, uh, what, yeah. what, what, we're going to put a uh, surface to. to ground missile just, against uh, Walgreens or whatever it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that oh, was. yeah, no, our buddy Eric, he's 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 unfortunately sponsored by Walgreens, and yeah, he decided to usurp our last show that we did <laughs> yeah. that our lovely Tanner here hosted. I wonder how they're having a, well, I wonder how the Shambhala's going. Yeah, what is That's it? That's also it's happening this sun, weekend. It's Sunday, it's there's true. still a night of music right yeah. now. I was, like, well, I was like, oh, I miss Eric, where is he? Oh, right, at Shambhala. At Shambhala. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> That's a thing that's happening right All now. Right, as well. So I wonder if anyone's written some Shambhala erotic. I haven't looked into it. Oh, I mean, that would write itself for sure yeah, as well. That's... <laughs> just a lot of descriptions of like, just like three day crotch stank and like. Or just, or just a oh. whole book about trying to find the orgy tent. And it's oh, never happening. <laughs> I found it in 2016. <laughs> they were not very inviting. <laughs> <laughs> well, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I know. It was ironic. <laughs> You'd think the Orgy 10 would be the most accepting place at the festival. I think they were just a little too full. Literally. A little literally. too full. A little too full. <laughs> literally. Both in, 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 in mind and Is that what soul. I said? <laughs> no, that's what I heard. Oh, maybe that's what I said. <laughs> the heat. The heat really gets to you. So yeah. I'll pitch you guys on what these books are. And then, and then we'll pitch a tent. Yeah. <laughs> Too late on that one. This, this is what happened. Is I walked into a bookstore, the We Book Inn on White Ave, and I was kind of like, I'm looking at the romance section. I'm like, well, there's like eight rows of romance, so I don't know where to begin. Um, but I, I did, so I did find another cowboy one, you know, like this is uh, called How the Cowboy Was One. And uh, you just pitch a tent right off that cover. I, I I am illiterate unless it's cowboy. Yeah. So so I was flipping <laughs> through it, but like I didn't. Uh, yeah, I just the, I couldn't find a lot of steamy in there. So I eventually sheepishly went to the guy and I was like, Hey, like, do you? I, I need some weird erotica, like baffling erotica. And he's like, Yeah, we don't have a lot of that. I was like, Well, you kind of have like eight rows of this. And he's like, No, 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 that's romance. Like, that's romance. romance. And then there's erotica. Yeah. Because the like the romance novels tend to be all like implication, and the erotica has got the scene. So because, he's like, Let me show you. It could be called. Yeah. He's <laughs> he was kind of like, Yeah, let me grab you some stuff that's like in the back. Um, Did he have some Chuck Tingle? I, here's what he had. So this one. Uh, I was really excited about it. It's called The Plains of Passage, and it's kind of like a... I think it's like Neolithic shit. So he, he used the phrase turgid caveman dong to pitch it. Turgid caveman dong. The oh man of the bookstore said yeah. this? God, I'm yeah. so aroused. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, well, this is going to be amazing. And, and like, Has he read it? <laughs> I dove into a bunch of these pages. I couldn't find anything. It's just people talking about, like, the wolves are coming. Uh, but, like, not even in that way. Uh... Alex flipped up the book and found a sex scene on his first try, but there's only one we found in here. <laughs> he, he is good at that. Then we've got this one. This is like, this is a Globe and Mail best book. Like, this thing has won awards, I guess. Okay. Yeah, uh, it's like about these people, I think, going on like a honeymoon and they have really bad sex. Interesting that it would be a bestseller. Yeah, so it's... There's, <clears throat> you mean it's relatable. There's like one yeah. main yeah, yeah. scene I've marked bad out here, and it sells. is baffling and then we have like this book is like radioactively horny oh this is the one that you said is just like literally everything. Yeah. that 
name is familiar. <laughs> Does she make Anne, other books? <laughs> it says Anne Rice writing as A N Rocolard. So I think okay. it was like writing erotica under a pseudonym. Yeah. Because like, Anne Rice is a familiar name to me. Yeah, that, that's the reaction I've gotten from a few people saying like, "Oh, Anne Rice, that's like a whole author." <laughs> yeah, that's a whole, that's a whole entire author. author. Is Anne Rice just like a romance? Novelist, I and then think so. You tell me. We could Google this live. Yeah, on I mean, like so. she, she. I remember her from something like relatively well known. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, so right. I, I think the guy did explain it to me. I think he was saying this was like before she got big, and then later was like, all right, I think someone's gonna ride these coattails. I don't know. I low key think she wrote. Did she write Fifty Shades? It's an American right? author of gothic fiction, erotic literature, and Christian liter literature. What, what, did, what did she write? Christian literature. She's best known for her series of novels, The Vampire Chronicles. Ah, Books from it. the Vampire Chronicles were the subject of two film adaptations, Interview with the Vampire and Queen of the Damned. Interview okay. with Vampire. She oh, wrote okay. Interview with Vampire. She's yeah. a heavy hitter. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I was pretty sure I, remind, <laughs> I remembered her from somewhere. <laughs> um, yeah, you want to... Okay, I'm also going to Google something else that is now, I guess, my suggested homework for adding to that stack. All you got to do is just search the... Uh, the author Chuck Tingle. <laughs> Chuck Tingle. And then I'm just going to go to images, and I'm going to give you some suggestions here. <clears throat> oh yeah, we're going to get a full bookstore going. Um, we've got Gay T Rex Law Firm Executive Boner. Oh hell yeah! Sorry, this is by Anne Rice. No, oh, no this, is Chuck <laughs> this is by Chuck Tingle. Chuck Tingle. Yeah. We've got pounded in the butt by the handsome sentient manifestation of my Twitch stream. Is, that, is, is, this, is this the guy who is this the guy who had that um Are these real books these or just like joke real titles? Books. Uh, with with, a, with a like dragon lady and yeah. the fucking <laughs> Okay, yeah. Well, right. It's there's he's got the the most insane titles to these books and they're all just like totally perverted like just you know oh my god this tyrannosaurus rex like you know, step brother no you know like, uh, stuff like that step, step tyrannosaurus step this, this, this one I can hardly read. it's a bird it's a plane it's the physical manis manifestation of my ridiculous reaction to uh, by sub sex what the fuck i can't even read those words are they're you so tiny. are you illiterate now it, 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 it used to be like like here, here's one. It's called Space Raptor Butt Invasion. It's literally you know? melting Tanner's <laughs> brain to death. <laughs> I love. You know it's good stuff. This then. American butt. Yeah, where's the, where's the one I was thinking of? Where it's like just literally a drink. This feels like it has <laughs> big like lady. Sharknado energy, where they're is, yeah. they're trying to make intentionally bad. I like. Oh yeah, no, he's self aware for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It 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 would be worth a giggle, I think. That's fair. I mean, well, we're gonna need erotica for every episode now, so like, yep. maybe I'll just open up a PO box. People can just mail me books or something because <laughs> that was pretty smart. Yeah, can find some good stuff. We'll, we'll work on that. <laughs> so this book, uh, make sure that they're by, sending you new well, copies. And my world-renowned <laughs> author Anne Rice. Yeah. Now this is this is crucial because like he was like, hey, I'm sorry, I only have part three of this trilogy. That's perfect. So like, dropping right in the middle. <laughs> this is not even the whole thing. This is the conclusion. Of the erotic adventures of Sleeping Beauty. That sounds problematic right away. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, it says it right in the name. Is maybe. There, is there? I have a random question. Is there a peen on the front of that book? Is there a peen? <clears throat> I don't. Oh yeah, 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 right there. Yeah, yeah. Peen. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, nice. Leave it right to Brando. He found it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll find it. I'll find the peen. peen from 10k away. <laughs> yeah. You There's find Becca kind of, with her, kind with of her just uh, peen in her sitting tits. right out in the open, to be honest. <laughs> it is, yeah, the more you look at it, the more you can't unsee it, for sure. But <laughs> I think it's the only peen on there. But, yeah, so it... I, take, I a think good, her, take a good look. I think her whole bit <laughs> was... Yeah, come on. <laughs> I mean, so, yeah, yeah, give, give it a good once-over. I think her whole bit was writing, like, various, like, erotic fanfics to, like, established fairy tales. Like, this is just the Sleeping Beauty series, I think. Okay. Oh, so she just writes erotica about nursery stories. That's what I remember <laughs> from what the bookstore guy was telling me. All right. What if the prince actually just fucked the this, shit this, out this of This book, bookstore right guy was very floor. knowledgeable. Do you very think, knowledgeable. Do you think he, he had read all stuff of this? ready I mean, to when go. When you a bookstore, like, let's be real, you're going to get bored. Who you're going to read all of the books. <laughs> Who just works at chapters for minimum wage and reads every book in the store? Well, he I was would. working. No, he was working at an indie bookstore. So. An indie book. Oh, indie, yeah. indie bookstore. No, it makes more sense for sure. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> All right. Who's uh, who's reading first? So, uh, well, yeah. You so, want to take a book, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Like I don't know. Like I don't know if these ones are even really going to be worth it compared to the other ones. Do we want to just stick with one book or? 
Does not matter to me. What do you think, host? You know, as the host, I believe <laughs> that we should each take a book, a different book. Well, yeah, we can spice it up. All right. I don't know. Okay. Well, then you're the host. You decide who gets what. <laughs> All right. That the plane's a passage. That's yours. Okay. Um, the Anne Rice one. We're gonna pass that over to, to Alex here. Hell yeah. Um, Cover peen. Yeah, you got the you get the peen. The is, was that the cowboy one or is that the one we put? This outside? is cowboy. The cow, I'll take the cowboy. I don't even know All what's right. going on with that peen. Are they fucking? Are these angels? So the thing about the her? cowboy one, is that I did. To be I, I, Adam I, I checked this in the bookstore. <laughs> I think it was like forty percent of the way through the book. Um, there's some mention of like a boner incident, but it's what really a I got out of it was. Incident. So the characters in that book, they have names that sound like horse names. Yeah. So it's describing how horny she is, and it sounds like she wants to fuck a horse. Oh, no. So <laughs> that's, that's, to me, the oh. best thing I got out of it, because I flipped through that book a lot, and I found no actual graphic stuff. And I guess this one's yours. So that scene I marked is, like, the main awkward scene. There's, there's two. That's the beginning and the end of it. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, it's like oh, a third of that book heck? is this one, like, honeymoon sex scene. A masterpiece. Yeah, it's a masterpiece. <laughs> Right. So, yeah, you may have to do some digging in that yeah. one. This episode brought to you by Brandon reading 20 pages of a book. Yeah, and that book you've got is like, <laughs> oh. you can flip to any page and there's going to be intensely horny shit. You do oh, not. That, that's awesome. awesome. The ones we've marked, I think, are specific scenes. Yeah, we, can, we can just pass this one around then. That's yeah. kind of what I was thinking, but... <laughs> Like, I, I don't the know, I can't... conclusion of the erotic adventures of Sleeping Beauty. Again, <laughs> dude, for fuck's sakes, <laughs> don't, everyone, don't, don't have erotica thoughts at all about someone who is sleeping, please. <laughs> is how the cowboy Consent was always won? good. This is a, it's a, it's a play on how the, how the West was won? I guess so, I yeah. Huh. So I got a... It's a very strangely shaped book. It's very small. And stumpy. <laughs> Ooh, they're, they're ordering nachos here on well, this if, page. If someone else is going to read, can you mute me real quick just so I can adjust this thing? Sure. Uh, you're, um, you're one? Yeah. Yeah, Tanner, do you want to take us away with your book? Take us away. Well, i got to find something. I mean, take, well, you, you could always like, start you, it off you, with you doing that. Uh, you got the easy one, right? Maybe yeah. if I, don't think you, I don't think you muted me. I don't know if I did either. No. Is it the white button? I thought it was the little gray one. Maybe it's not a mute button. It's just maybe the monitor mute or something. Oh. All right. Just, well, I'm just going to make a bunch of noise. <laughs> Ear drums bursting. Fuck it. Just hand. don't say anything really yeah, important or tenor. interesting while I'm doing this. You should have absolutely seen the spider that I woke up to this morning. The thing was like the size of my thumb. Dude, I had a... Okay, so years ago when I was at Inshallah here, it was, again, blistering hot. Oh, yeah. And I woke up to something crawling on my back, and I, well, I, was, I was sleeping without a shirt, and the tent door was open because it was too hot. Mm -hmm. So I just flung it off my back, and I saw a large spider, Yeah. and subsequently, what well, seems to be, 75 small spiders fly off its back. Yeah. And scatter all around the fucking tent that I was sleeping in. So I, needless to say, I was not sleeping any longer. <laughs> And then, and then from the, from the last time that you told the story, I believe that it ends with, and then you blacked out and can't remember the rest of the story. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know what I did after that. I don't know if I... There were spiders all over the tent, and then I fucking passed away and came I back. Think, <laughs> I think they all ran back to the mother's back. That, I don't know if they know how to do that. <laughs> they definitely do. Like, I flung them over, and there was tons and tons of tiny little spiders. And then spiders. all of a sudden, there was no they spiders. they all find their way back to the mother. I don't... Well, I mean, sure. <laughs> Whatever you want to believe, Tanner. I, I you did, I, it's true. When you got back into the tent, there was no spiders. I mean, well, you don't... <laughs> As a higher remember. authority on spiders than Alex could ever be, you... A oh, strange, <laughs> strange man. Strange, strange man. What? Um, I also Where's your degree of the spiders, Brandon? <laughs> I love them. I love my spiders. All right. You want them all to die in a fire? No, no. Just when they're on my body or in my room or in the house or no, 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 no. If the they're, 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 I mean, that's all right. If they're upstairs, you guys can deal with them. If they're in my personal, if they're getting into my personal space. They're gonna fucking die. <laughs> they're gonna die. I don't care. We ain't got no time for spiders. There's plenty of them out there. Uh, so you don't okay. have to eat the mic as much as you are. You can yeah. have a little space. All right. So Just arm tired. <laughs> so who's going first? Like, how are we deciding this? Should we roll for it? Yeah, let's roll for it. That sounds like a wonderful idea, Some actually. Dice over um, there. What? What are you pointing at? The dice. Well, I got dice right here. Oh. 
Yeah. And Sorry, Ramirez is in the way. Um, yeah, did you, grab, did you grab dice for yourself yet? I haven't, no. Okay, well, there's a yeah, pile right. on the table. So we all just what, we'll, do we we'll all just roll two. Yeah, we'll roll two. But I would grab I would grab four for the game because then you yeah. can just like two distinct pairs. So when you're rolling with yeah. advantage or disadvantage, you can just tell. Yeah, Alex. One yeah. pair and the other. Grab me a couple dice too, please. What's this wooden one with a thirty-two on it? Uh, it's like a doubling cube, but it's something to do with backgammon, I think. Like you just you just like oh, mark whether you're like you do when you do like a double or nothing game or something i don't know it's two four eight sixteen thirty two sixty four yeah, it's a double. it is a doubling now i would love to just sneak that into a game and just roll and be like yeah i got a 66 <laughs> oh <my like>. <laughs> <laughs> all right um uh, that's not how math works let's roll some dice i'm so sunburned all right well i got an eight you are a very red boy i got seven i also got eight i also got seven okay so the People with eight go first. You guys roll. Are we, are we tie breaking here? Yep. Tie break. I, I will not stand for this tie shit. I got ten. I got six. All right. Nice. Alex is going first. All righty. Gives me some time. I mean, I, it would have been. We're blowing our load on the best book first, but yeah, let's go. <laughs> yeah, so let's let's talk. Once all you start of... reading this book, you may want to just ditch all the other ones. Let's so. let's talk all about <laughs> bastardizing Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> oh yeah, I didn't consider that it's going to be hard to read a book while you're holding a mic. Just should get Brandon right. to hold the mic in front of your face. No, it should be good. Okay. All right. <laughs> I reached down and felt its hard, hot length. <laughs> the wetness at the tip. You were not lying. <laughs> you're, you're almost <laughs> too beautiful, I said. <laughs> Makes you want to sneak out of this place with you naked, strapped over my saddle the way your sultan soldiers stole me. I take you to the desert, make you my servant, beat you with the thick belt of yours as you watered the horse, fed the fire, made me supper. <laughs> it is fantastic. Yeah, like the whole book is entirely about like some form of servitude or another. Like, yeah, it's, it's an interesting, definitely a kink. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's full gas pedal on the kink, like oh, yeah. very specific one of just being like tied up and enslaved. Like that is... Very, Front very, very, very specific, but also, I mean, yeah. <laughs> His body quivered all over. His cheeks teemed with the color despite the dark skin. I could almost hear his heart. I moved down and knelt between his thighs. He was not moving a muscle now to resist me. His cock was bobbing. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> wait, but I was finished bobbing. playing with him. Yeah, what that cock do? It bobs. It, it, uh, it bobs. It yeah, so, yeah, very, very <laughs> specific. Oh, <laughs> guys, it makes sense now. For a cock. The, 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 the harassers online, please give Bob and Vagine. Please, it please makes Bob's sense now. Give Bob and Vagine. It, it makes so much sense. <laughs> Give Bob, give, angle, so give, 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 give Bob, yeah. give a gene, and then just end it with you, you whore. <laughs> uh, all right, where are we at? I had to have him now. Then the other spices might be mine. What does that even mean? Punishing his buttocks. I just... <laughs> Wow, that's some that's some crisp literature right there. It's <laughs> yeah. some very confusing literature. <laughs> uh, oh, if this clarifies anything, the narrator is not Sleeping Beauty. I, okay, yeah, I mean, like, well, yeah, I'm wondering what the context is in terms of the sleeping of the beauty. <laughs> yeah, is, is it this, Belle? Is her name? So, is, is this, no, that's is, Beauty and the Beast. Is this, oh, sorry, is, Sleeping is, Beauty is... Do, um, do you want me to give you the rundown of what i Is this a dream? Do you is she want, awake? Do you want me to give you the rundown of what I've figured out so far? Sure. So, I figured out nothing, like, so... <laughs> the, 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 there's, like, a prologue which tells you what happened the first two books, which is helpful. And oh, yeah, I guess this is the conclusion. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know how much this beauty... And, again, she doesn't get a name at all. She's. You, you're not on mic, Callie. If you want to contribute, to that, <laughs> here she is here. wanting to fucking contribute. <laughs> yeah. I, I should have. Well, okay. Wait. Yeah. So you say what you're gonna say, and we'll yell it back to the microphones. <laughs> Callie, you wanna you wanna fucking say something? There's room next to me. No Come and dip in. She says there's no indication that Sleeping Beauty is a she. Well, it, it, the, it is gender neutral, I suppose. In, well, in, a, in this book, she's called Princess Beauty. Okay. okay. So it's it's they are being given a fe, uh, femme coded title, an right. honorific. Fair. But yeah, is not given any kind of actual name, and is referenced in the third person because it's a male narrator who I think like does fuck. And also, I don't think she does any sleeping. Like this is so far post. -sleep. <laughs> well, I mean, like the, this is the conclusion. Also, again, how do Existing you? Beauty. But how not, does one write full three full books? 
of this. <laughs> well, because you get into other stuff, and that's my point, is that you look in it and you're like, okay, I'm waiting for this beauty character to do some fucking... I think I found, like, one page where she does, but... Are these just other people fucking? Yeah. It's oh, mostly okay. gay sex. Oh, well. It's a story, erotic story of Sleeping Beauty, mostly featuring two unrelated the, dudes fucking. The, the cover of the book literally has a guy and a girl fucking on the cover. You yeah. Know, I'm, not, I'm not so convinced, because it looks like there's another... A ball sack behind that peen. Well, I mean, I guess so, she just has long hair. So that's but. the thing is, I maybe <laughs> she did a lot more of it in the first two books, but this one, as far as I can tell, is mostly gay dudes. I think there's a gay three way in there, so there's so much, so much not beauty in there. <laughs> so much, so much not beauty. Yeah, just just sleeping, I guess. No, <laughs> just sleeping with each other. Yeah. All right, let's go. One more paragraph, and then. Uh, one you guys should. Take the reins. I'm struggling to find anything worth reading in here. Yeah, yeah that's what I was warning you about. Yeah, I mean, you, yeah. Can just, you can just go nuts on this one. He moaned, and his eyes flickered like two fires as he glared at me. I felt, I felt the little anus nice and dry, <laughs> and I touched my cock, Quality. touched it for the first time in all these days of torture, and smeared the moisture seeping from it all over the tip until it was very wet, <laughs> and then I went into him. <laughs> That's yeah. that's just like bad writing. Well, we were talking about it's this. It was a very wet. He's like Donald Trump. We were talking about this writing. on the beach, right? And we were came to the conclusion like, there's no way this lady has had anal sex because she's like, oh yeah, that little bit of pre cum. <laughs> that's all the lube they use. That little anus, like very specifically little anus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, tiny anus. Okay, well we'll finish the we'll finish the page here. Sure. He was tight, but not too tight. <laughs> He couldn't lock me out. <laughs> he moaned again, and I went deeper. Through the ring of muscle that scraped me and maddened me until I was well into him. Then I pressed down on him, forcing his legs back against him until he bent his knees over my shoulders. All right. <laughs> and then I started driving in him hard. I let my cock slide almost out, then plunge forward. Then almost out again. <laughs> and then I woke up and shot on missed again. And woke up with a popsicle stick in my mouth. We'll see if anyone gets that. <laughs> I sure didn't. <laughs> Game Grumps, it's good stuff. And he sighed against the keg. The silk becoming wet. They have a gag again, apparently. Didn't, didn't oh, catch that part. the keg. <laughs> <laughs> Got a little keg going. I'm a bit my mosquito now. You do, like, you do a keg stand while someone is, like, jacking you off? Or? Uh, I mean, I'm sure there's a name for that. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like something that Tanner has probably done. Well, I, I will now. <laughs> it's on my list. Well, that reminds me. We did forget to expound on what Born During a Blumpkin is all about. <laughs> born born a During a Blumpkin. <laughs> yeah, that's all I could come up with. <laughs> yeah, like, how does that manifest? Was, like, what are those? Was, was that your well, title of the of the show we're currently on? Yeah, that's oh, okay. the show we're on. That's, All right, gotcha. You, you didn't know that? Well, well, well <laughs> Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> well, listen, Tanner, my hand grows It's going to sound so bizarre because <laughs> the mic did not pick up the people walking by <laughs> Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> we also have not explained why people would be walking by us saying no, Merry Christmas. We'll just leave it at that. All right. <laughs> yeah. The ambiguity is what makes it fun. As you can tell by the snow surrounding us right now. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's December. Definitely not July. All right, so listen, my hand grows for his cock, found it, started stroking it in time with my thrusts. This is what you deserve, I said through my teeth. This is what you really deserve. You are my slave here and now, and damn the rest of them, damn the sultan, the entire palace. That's it's that's gotta, that is one page, guys. I think I, I think I need to I think I need to step away for a second. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go. You can just go behind the tent here. Yeah, we, we, well, no, I've got my I've got my tent closets. For yeah, that. I've got my yeah. stuff over there. Yeah, no, 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 I've got the tent closets. That's what that's for. Yeah, we, me and Taylor we were talking about me and Brandon had to take turns masturbating in the tent. <laughs> we need to get our three times a day in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's difficult when you're sharing a tent with a homie. But I mean, two out of three done sitting here. Sorry. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> Real quick, real real quick, like. Um. So yeah, I'm I'm having. Yeah, just 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 read a page from this, Tanner. Just go. No, just I, go okay. Nuts. So I did find something in this book that, it, like, at first glance, I was like, oh, I found something. And then I'm not even reading the part that you gave me. I just realized that I'm not. I'm well, not there even was two. The like, like I said, I marked two of the like notable gay sex scenes. Like you're very like I marked just part of that scene. Yeah. But <laughs> any page in the book, you open it up, it's just impossibly horny. So I was like, I don't need to mark this book. Yeah, no, so I, I found something in here that, like, sort of started to sound like it was leading towards, like, sexiness. Oh, thank you. And then it, yeah, I'll just, I'll just read it. Just, yep. we'll just, we'll just get into this together. 
Um, yes, fuck you, Callie. <laughs> I got the Oreo. <laughs> yeah, so it starts, her breath slowly came back to her, and she turned her head to say something, but felt a prickling sting shoot down her back. Something was poking her in the neck. She groaned, winced. Medic! Do we have a medic on site? <laughs> <laughs> I like, I was reading it and I was like, oh, I found something. And then it. You thought it was no a dick card and I was like, in the neck? Yeah, no. I did. Well, that's so that's wet. everyone's favorite with the blood. <laughs> you like the way I'm dicking your neck? This, the, the cover of this book, I'm just going to put this in front of the camera, guys. It's a uh, very <laughs> ripply, robust cowboy. Yeah. Sure. At, at least he should be fucking. With a fucking a belt buckle that just drives me mad. Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> Wouldn't you like his dick resting <laughs> on your neck? <laughs> his prick. Uh, I don't know if the guy gets laid in this book, which... I was misleading. There is a boner incident. I remember that phrasing. It's it's in like... A boner it's, incident? That I believe was it's the before phrase. the halfway point. <laughs> I think so, yeah. And then there was There's a boner incident. There's this weird incident. trend with a lot of like mainstream romance and erotica where like they won't they will use the weirdest words like they have to be like a member a shaft like yeah 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 and, you gotta and, get the synonyms going whereas this but they love to use the word boner and like it's the least erotic word yeah true. like it's like a, that's a, that's a word you learned as a child right that's that's like <laughs> dude, boner. boner boner is a, a fucking banger of a word when you're in junior high yeah, yeah. God, like beavis and butthead like just they're, those were the days. The stupid tapestry just catches in my head. It's so annoying. It's, <laughs> it's, it's part of you now. Yeah. <laughs> it was protecting from the weather. Melting sure. Oreo. All right, so that's your section? You're done? <laughs> I believe so because I can't find anything else um, right. that looks even... Like, there's words like this. There's, I keep looking, like, scanning the page. I see the word sultry and, like, you know... All this other stuff. And then it's just, like, the, the most mundane, boner. non-romantic yeah. shit. Like, is this a romance novel? Yeah. Have you seen section? the cover? Uh, return to New York Times best-selling author Lori Wilde's beloved town of Cupid, Texas, where wedding fever is in the air, and two best friends discover that sometimes the perfect match is standing right in front of you. So what, do they just get fucking married? I guess so. <laughs> like, Have you ever seen a book? That's what the guy was trying to warn me. He's like, that's not erotica, that's romance. And like, oh, uh, okay, yeah. You knew what I was talking about, I guess. Yeah, I grabbed it because it was five bucks, and I did like the part that I never got around to marking <laughs> about how it sounds like she wants to fuck a horse. So maybe I'll find that part later. Have we ever? Yeah, we, have, has anyone ever read a book that is not a New York Times bestseller? There's a lot of them. So there's <laughs> this. Read, someone showed me this. Uh, well, no, I, I saw this. Uh, Globe someone, and Mail best book. Yeah, not a New ever. York Times, just Globe and Mail. So <laughs> that's Canadian fiction for you. Where it's like, yeah, you you know, it, it's like oh, I won a yeah. Juno award. Like, okay, buddy. I mean, it does say <laughs> on the back. For you. Uh, New York Times, number one national best. Oh, there you yeah. go. So, Kelly, you were, there you were saying. You yeah, so there, I saw it was an article or a Twitter thread or something where uh, someone was saying, like, a New York Times bestseller just means you ever cracked their charts. And it's, like, not even the top 10. It's, like, the top 100 mm -hmm. yeah. ever. <laughs> right. And like, so you're on the list. Marketing pushes you to get that, like, that little yeah. tiny spike. And then you're just. It's, it's like being, like, hey, like, billboard charting artist. Like, that's all it is. <laughs> And uh, they showed how easy it was to get because if you write something, um, like attuned to like a micro genre, like I don't know, like like uh, Disney or not Disney, like but like um, what, what is it? A fairy tale, like fairy, erotica. Fairy tale erotica. Yeah. So if you if you find it something that is a really seldom touched genre oh, so that the is on their of list, that genre. Yeah. So uh. you can you can write something incre <laughs> uh, incredibly, like you can write five pages. Um, and put it in a extremely obscure category and self publish it on Amazon and just manually buy like 10 copies of it. You'll get on the chart for a day and then you can say without lying, you're a New York Times bestselling author. Yeah, I know I might do that to do it. Yeah, it means very little. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Tanner, write some erotic up. I, you got plenty rocking around in your brain there, I'm sure. Yeah, I, it, ask it me probably... about keg stands and getting <laughs> jerked off. If you write <laughs> keg stand jerk off erotica, we will read it on the show. I promise. I mean, Chuck um, Tingle's pretty successful. I'm, we can follow in their footsteps. Yeah. I want. I want to hear. I want to hear the full tale of the uh, the candy thong. I think the oh, world needs okay. to hear that. The motion. Well, you want me to tell it now, or do you want me to write it? In the, I'll, I'll write it. Yeah, we'll write, write it. it. We'll write it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I wish that was more erotic than it was. It was mostly just <laughs> looked hot because it was like forty degrees. I mean, you were in Tanner and having everybody nibbling candy off of. A, I, I saw. A I saw region. Tanner's junk plenty. It was fine. I think Dietrich, Actually, and, Dietrich and Brett were rocking around as well. I, True. Brett was very upset. He's like, yeah, "What? Well, people for, to see my cock." For context, right. I walked around a music festival with like a candy thong and a candy bra on 
uh, actually Callie and I did together, and we were trying to compete to see how many people would eat the candy off us, and like who would get could get the better numbers. And for some reason, I was kicking the pants off Callie, <laughs> and I, I don't know why. I think they were just like afraid to like you know whenever people came up to us, they were just like afraid to go for the you know the girls boobs or whatever like the bra but they're really into your dog yeah well they're, they're, were they eating it off your your bra yes, or your panties no hands and eat a piece of candy off so you had to like get down and like bite one off the string did anyone eat off of either of your panties yes <laughs> either off the genitals okay. Definitely. i had i had probably close to it well i was somewhere around 10 or 12 people Tanner, you need to right tell off, a story right about, off the shaft about the guy who <laughs> was really fucking up all about his cock. Oh yeah, there was there was a guy. <laughs> we, so we, we 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 amassed a troop. We brought enough that we like suited people up, and we decided to go on like a little candy thong brigade. We called it, and we were walking around just trying to get people to eat it off us. And this one dude ran out of his campsite, and like came right up to me, and he was like, "Yo, he was, like he was just, like flexing, chest, chest puffing." And he's like, you think you're fucking, you know, you think you're fucking hot shit? And I was like, what's going what? on here? I thought it was a bit. I, su I thoroughly thought it was a bit because he was like all not, he was just unhappy about the fact that we were walking by with our asses hanging out. And then he, uh, he just pulls down his pants and like, like a whole grapefruit fistful of his scrotum. <laughs> Like he had, I don't know if he had grapefruit. elephantitis. It was like the size of a grapefruit. His testicles were engorged <laughs> with, I don't know if it was a tumor or what, but he was like, fucking look at this. And he just like, he's like, look at my testicles. Like, look at how big they are. And I thought it was a bit still. So I kind of laughed, which made him really mad. And then when I realized he was getting really mad, I was like, whoa, this is fucked up and weird. I'm going to walk <laughs> this away is now. Funny. And I'm going to walk off with my candy thong. I was like, that's, that's cool, man. I'm, I'm going to go back with, see, you know, hang out with my homies over there. <laughs> and I just kind of walked away. And it was, I don't know. It, yeah, it, was, it was the really weirdest weird. thing I'd seen in my life till, to that day, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so... Yeah, that's the weirdest thing. So I mean, every, I, I love that story because every time you tell it, I'm like, is that even fucking real or is that a fever dream? <laughs> no, he, he looked like he was just had been wilding out for days and I don't, I don't know if he knew what he was doing like made sense but he was pretty confident in his gesture he, he was he was definitely doing it whatever it was he was yeah. doing it was like little man syndrome but in the opposite direction he was swollen ball giant, syndrome. giant ball yeah syndrome. we could put we could put that on five pages of paper and that story could be a new york times bestseller there you go well, we, we got what category is that keg keg stand and masturbation <laughs> Guy with giant balls, good to go. Dude, Tanner's it was probably the biggest book. balls I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> like, props to the guy, but... I mean, well, yeah, I mean, like, g good for him, I guess, if it's yeah. not a disease, but it probably is. <laughs> and I had, I was walking around with, like, a bouquet of daisies in my butt crack, mm. and I'd walk into people's camps, and I'd just, I'd be like, you guys want some candy? And then I'd turn around and be like, you get a flower. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, it was... We were young. <laughs> we were young. <laughs> yeah, about, you well, say that like you wouldn't six still do years that. Ago. No. <laughs> yeah, we're, yeah, I'm normal now. I feel like I was in better shape. I mean, we started out this episode talking about the the baby weight. You know, I think I think, <laughs> I think you were podcasting out there too. <laughs> you guys did a lot of shit back then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can see my sunscreen over there. I'm gonna go get it. See, yeah, if you want to, duck out. If you want to just right like now, completely for, bail and be a, a total fucking failure then I'm you can get up from the seat <laughs> 10 feet the man the myth the legend is going to go put on sunscreen while sitting in the shade yeah. it's okay. <laughs> so whose turn is it to read erotica um like you, like. you know what i'm gonna grab this book while while he's relinquished yeah it. so i will say this if you don't want to commit to that whole chapter i'm not committing to the whole chapter because the I've, ending I've... is the best part of that passage okay i'll read the first paragraph and then i'll read the last paragraph yeah Lo lose the context to just get all the when Florence reached the bedroom, she released Edward's hand and, steadying herself against one of the oak posts that supported the bed's canopy, she dipped first to her right, then to her left, dropping a shoulder prettily each time in order to remove her shoes. These were going away shoes she had bought with her mother while, <laughs> bought with her mother one quarrelsome rainy afternoon in Debenhams. It was unusual and stressful for Violet to enter a shop. I don't know who either of these people are yet. <laughs> they were soft, pale blue leather, with low heels and a tiny bow at the front, artfully twisted in leather of darker blue. The bride was not hurried in her movements. This was yet another one of those delaying tactics that also committed her further. 
she was aware of her husband enchanted gaze, but for a moment she did not feel quite so agitated or pressured. Entering the bedroom, she had plunged into an uncomfortable, dreamlike condition that encumbered her like an old-fashioned diving suit in deep water. My brain is so mangled when you said gaze, I wasn't thinking G-A-Z-E. I was thinking gaze, as in, as in the gaze. The gaze. <laughs> to be fair, to be fair, half of this paragraph is one sentence. There's like five commas. I, I, Why is the writing also shit in these notes? I mean, that's kind of the point. <laughs> hey, this, the cover said it's a masterpiece. It says, so it says a masterpiece. It. It's from, Wait, what's the book from called? a it's novel called? by it's the author of a On Chisel Beach. On Chisel Beach. Hmm. Yes, Chessel. Chessel. Is it Chessel or is it Chisel? Also, we're all illiterate. Chessel. It looked like Chessel to me. <laughs> Chiseled beach. <laughs> all right, let's 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 fast it forward. Actually, it here. does say chisel, doesn't it? You can you can tell that we are we're all physical forms out here of the of the of the male physique. So the very the, chiseled. The context is she has blue shoes, and also That's the context. Yeah, she has blue <laughs> shoes, and also is I guess getting married. Yeah, this is their honeymoon. I think this is their honeymoon. So like okay. the the general, I think, like conceit of the book is that like this is a set in like. Like the fifties or something, like it's kind of a like pre sexual revolution kind of thing. So they don't know what they're doing and so it's describing like the awkwardness of their honeymoon. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. This I'm is the first time that we fucked. We couldn't bang until we got married. Here, wait, can I just see real quick? Oh, I picked a wonderful place. Oh, you just... you found the part. Uh, yeah, I, I <laughs> oh guys. What a journey we're like, on. Ooh, I would yeah. start right there. What a journey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brandon, get, get her going. No, I, I'm like, I'm, I'm like going right, like to start right there because I like. School. No, but like the context of <laughs> that's like, <laughs> trust okay. me, trust okay. me. I read the whole thing, the whole, the, the whole, the whole section, the whole chapter. Yeah, he's like, I've, I've read this book like four times. I, <laughs> hey, I, I prepare, you know, like you prepare. Not, yeah, things are getting spicy. She found his testicles first, and not at all afraid now, she curled her fingers softly around his extraordinarily bristling item. She, <laughs> she had seen in different forms on dogs and horses, but I never quite believed could fit comfortably on an adult Who wants humans. to fuck animals in these books? I think she's just saying he's hung like a horse. I mean, Which, that's to fair. stop for a second, apparently... Or, apparently, or also a dog. Or also a dog. <laughs> apparently, considering the size of a horse compared to a man. Tiny we penis. have we have roughly like the average human dick is about the same size as like comparatively to a horse dick. If you were to scale us Bigger, up to the size actually. of a horse, we you are all, human, we human, are human, all human. that's why it's not hung proportionally like a horse. It's hung literally like a horse human, cock human on your body. Have the largest yeah. penis size to body of all primates. And don't uh, maybe you do you know. speak for yourself, buddy. <laughs> no one wants to see that right now. No. Right. <laughs> Drawing her fingers across its underside, she arrived at the base of it's... his penis, which she held with extreme care. They actually said penis. For she had no idea how sensitive or robust it was. She trailed her fingers along its length, noting with interest its silky texture, right to the tip, which she lightly stroked and then amazed by her own boldness she moved back and down a little to take this penis firmly about halfway long and pulled it down towards a slight adjustment until she felt it just touching her labia oh yeah <laughs> again there's like five commas in there this I'm, guy needs to, he, I am the so hot right now the run on sentences are a little a little much <laughs> You're doing well. Oh my god. It's, it gets so much. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> How could she have known what a terrible mistake she was making? Had she pulled on the wrong thing? Had she gripped too tight? He gave it a wail. A, com a complicated series of agonized rising vowels. The sort of sound she had heard once in a comedy film when a waiter, <laughs> weaving this way and that, appeared to be about to drop a towering pile of super plates. That's so specific. <laughs> Wow. So, how, do, how do you think that line up? <laughs> Let's all try to make that sound, shall we? What do you think Man, that I've sound is? <laughs> I've only, heard, I've only heard this sound one other place, and that's when I was at Boston Pizza watching this guy fuck up a bunch of plates. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, this is the, this is the real heavy hitter here. In horror, she let go as Ezward, rising up with a bewildered look, his muscular back 
arcing in spasms, emptied himself over emptied in her gouts. In, in her gouts? In her gouts. In vigorous but diminishing I quantities. I can show you the word. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I know that it exists. I know. <laughs> gout, gout, gout is again. Disease. That is such an amazing. <laughs> in horror, she let go as Edward, rising up with a bewildered look, his muscular back arcing in spasms emptied himself over in gouts in vigorous but diminishing quantities, <laughs> filling her navel, coating her belly, thighs, and even a portion of her chin and kneecap in tepid, viscous fluid. Why does it go from chin to kneecap real fast? <laughs> well, because he's a fucking baller. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's this guy who has <laughs> balls. Chin the kneecap. I, got, I got some on my chin, I got some on my knee. <laughs> Vigor, what's it? Vigorous but diminishing? Vigorous but diminishing. Yeah, uh, in vigorous but diminishing. Yeah, qualities. I gotta go jerk off. Oh, yeah. incredible. <laughs> Alright, right see, see you later. That is just my favorite are, are you going to go get your living cum? Also yeah, known as your child? <laughs> <laughs> so it's out of Tanner looks at his child, he's like, I made this. Are you gonna, are you gonna keep going? Sperm. I'll give it all, 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 a couple more sentences here. Let's let's finish off this man's orgasm for the audience. Yeah, that, thank you. <laughs> yeah. It was a calamity. You, got, you gotta finish. Exactly, you gotta finish. It was a calamity, and she knew immediately it was all her fault. That she was inept, control. ignorant, and stupid. She should have not interfered. She should have never believed the manual. If his jugular had burst, it could have not... It, it could not have seemed more terrible. How did we get there? I don't know. <laughs> How typical her overconfident meddling in matters of awesome complexity. She should have known well enough that her attitude in rehearsals for the string quartet had no relevance here. Well, holy fuck, I cannot follow. <laughs> no. I think she goes on to, like, mop herself up with a pillow, too. Like, it's just... Like, what the fuck? Uh, you, what a dream. Now, I don't what? often read books how did, how did we get to something about his jugular exploding yeah. to a string quartet? No, I, I, I question the status of this book. I question the status of the mind of the person who wrote that book. It, it kind of feels like they were trying to write, like, three different things and just edited them all together. <clears throat> All right, should we do one more passage? We're we're yeah, we're, we're running out of uh, time in the interview portions. So. <laughs> yeah, we are. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Three minutes left. <laughs> All right, I think it, I think we started a quarter after. Yeah, that's what I'm going with. Uh, all right, so what was? I, I haven't even really looked at this part. Uh, all right, I'm just gonna start here. So this is cave people doing something. <laughs> just cave people stuff. Yeah. Do we know what uh, what era this is? What is like? What does the back say? Uh, <clears throat> Jean M. Auel returns us to the earliest days of humankind and to the captivating adventures of the curious heroine called Ayla. With her companion John Delar, Ayla sets out on the most dangerous and daring journey away from the welcoming hearth of the mammoth hunters and into the unknown. Their odyssey spans a beautiful but treacherous continent, the windswept grasslands of Ice Age Europe. So there you go, Ice Age Europe. All right. Ice Age Europe. All right. <clears throat> Casting the bold pair among strangers. Soon, soon, some will become friends, intrigued by Ayla's ways of taming wild horses and wolves. Others will become fierce enemies, threatened by what they cannot understand. But always the orphaned Ayla and the wandering John Delar will heed the voice and vision that urges them on deeper into the dark and spectacular heart of an unmapped world. For they are driven to reach that place on Earth they can call home. Together they hold the future in their hands. It doesn't even really imply romance. John Delar is an absurd name. Yeah, <laughs> like it's cave people. They're supposed to be named like Ugg and Kronk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think they had enough syllables back but, then for that. <laughs> you know, were they really? <laughs> like maybe they actually had bitchin' names. We just yeah, we, we we don't know. I guess. All right. Well, here we go. <clears throat> Uh, without being aware that she moved, Ayla was in his arms, feeling- Should I do this in a caveman voice? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Ayla was in his arms, feeling his strong embrace and his warm and eager mouth on hers. There was certainly no lack of, capital P, pleasures in her life. They shared the gift of the mother regularly with great enjoyment, but this moment was exceptional. I have no idea what gift of the mother the is. Gift of the mother. Gift of the, of the mother. Well, I would assume not.